Carfax coming along nicely. Yes! God, oh, Jesus. Morning, Holly. There we are, we coming. Ah, you bandit. Good morning. Back on a tractor this morning, not been on a tractor for quite a wee while actually. Got some spring barley to spray here. And we've got four fields, 30 for 70, 75 hectares for Ramularia, Ramularia and Spring Sporia. Quick pit stop for some of this special red stuff. What's red diesel at the moment? 117 pence or something like that? Ah. Just about full. There you go. From the expensive red stuff to the expensive blue stuff. Ah, oh, this pressure got to mine. Either that or it's full. God, oh, Jesus. Good to go. Right, that's us yoked up. Kems are in, tanks filling up, we're shooting for 3200 litres. Here we are, field number one. Let's get this set up. Field select, this one is called Big Cosmos. Check it's not all green. That's no, all green, I just need to reset that. Right, it's all cleared of being green now. Window could do with a clean. Loads and loads of hairs kicking about this year. So this is the field we're in just now. Traditionally, it's been ploughed and sown in the direction you can see on the image, uh, kind of down towards the road. And it is a sloping field down to the road. So this year, because we were planning on doing drainage down by the roadside, we ploughed it um, perpendicular to what we usually do, just so we could leave some ground unploughed so we could get some drainage done, which we never got done in the end. But sowing it perpendicularly is definitely helped in terms of surface runoff if it's ploughed and sown and the crops are growing perpendicular to uh, the direction of the water travel it slows the water and allows it to soak into the ground rather than letting it run pick up speed and cut channels and make a mess of the field so might stick with doing it this way to be honest quality of the crops in the ground this year is looking lovely it's the end price which is a concern the cereal prices have come back quite a bit um, same with the rate Seems more like it's kind of the stock guys moving it about rather than actual supply and demand shifting it because there's not much supply. Ukrainian stockpiles will be affecting it. Ukraine have loads and loads of wheat stored right now. Their stores have got a lot more in them than traditionally. And if they're able to get that to market, it is going to affect the price. There's threats of that, whether it comes to anything. This hair's having a bit of a workout. I've chased it up about four tram lines so far. Eventually it'll get tired and it'll cut across to the next tram line up there. Then I'll catch up coming back the way. There it goes. There it is again. Where's it gonna go? Is it gonna go right like usual? Hey! Bit of an oil leak here. So this ram controls the axle steering on this machine and you can see there's a bit of leakage here, so I'll try and get that tightened up. Oh, it's pretty tight already. Right, we'll try that, see what it's like. It's not one to line up perfectly when it's on uh, auto tracking. I noticed that leak, so hopefully that'll fix that issue. Right, we loaded up again, 3,276 litres. Field number two, this one, tiny wee field. Takes a wee bit longer than it should to spray the area because it's an awkward wee thing. Left pointy dog leg bit and uh, not the best.
the big field, which is this one. Two revs up, auto lock. This is 11 hectares, this field just come out of a 34 hectare bit. Then I've got a 12 hectare bit and a 17 hectare bit to do. Field done, off to this one next. Next field is top of the hill. There we go, top of the hill. There we go, that's the boundary there that we're at just now. So just get cracking. Auto steering, unlock there, and we're off. You can tell it's the first spraying day in a while. There's a sprayer right in the middle of the screen now. There's one, where's it gone? There it is. And then this one. They're two big self propelled things. That'd be nice, a big self propelled. That chance of that happening. We're getting there, we're not putting an insecticide on. Uh, I spoke about that a few days ago, whether we would or we wouldn't, depending on what it was like for aphids. It's actually fine for aphids. It, the, the weather's kind of cooled down, it's been wet, but it's looking a really nice crop at the moment. Everything is, to be honest. Kev's chucking a plough on there. I'm just thinking about getting an order ready for plough metal, also shifting the ploughs out of the road because that's getting concreted down there. But yeah, we need to go over all the machinery and just see what metal we need to order for the back end because Spalding's phoned and said, yeah, if you're wanting to get back end orders in, then do it earlier than usual because metal is an issue, just like everything's an issue at the moment. Anyway, last tankful, we're done. Field number four of the day, here it is. Just about done, this is only 12 hectares. Then go back, wash out, job done. Done. Spuds over there looking well. They're not our spuds, but we let out the ground for spuds to be grown. We pick a field every year, roughly. And it just helps with the rotation and whatnot, and they pay all right, to be honest. The trade-off is the quality of the ground coming back into it after they've been in. If it's wet when they come to harvest, then uh, it can be a bit messy when you get the field back. Pack this up in here, Kev's going to do some spraying tomorrow, I've got some cattle to shift. Going to shift the bulls tomorrow, sort them about. So I'll probably need to take the quad bike along the road to get hold of Euro. Kev's going to take this and go spraying tomorrow, there's some more winter wallet to do along the road. That's a good chunk of it done here uh, today, Kev will get the rest of it finished tomorrow, there's not too much else to do. We've not got back to washing the rest of the shed, you can see this has come up fairly well though. So that's still on the list of things to do. That feed got bruised yesterday. It needs rapeseed pellets mixed through it. Take along the road to yard three. I've got quite a few things to get done at the sunflowers. Highland Shoals coming up next weekend. Dad's obviously be getting soil samples for the fields that the rape's going to go into in the back end. Go and have a wee look and see how the sunflowers are doing. Righty ho! This patch is still just taking its time. There's a few big ones kicking about. <sighs> nah, to be fair, they're coming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, they are. They are there. They're just in amongst weeds. Tricky to spot. All in all, sunflowers are doing well. There's a bit of weed pressure over there, but they'll be a foot tall now, so they're doing well. Massive leaves on them. These get to an enormous size. I mean, they're probably half a meter wide by the time they're full sized. Soak up so much sunlight. I've semi lost hope in this space. Uh, these are weeds. They look a bit like sunflowers. That's a sunflower. That's a weed. Having said that, this time last year, they were just starting to come out of the ground. So technically this patch here is further ahead than they were last year. Car park's coming along nicely. Feels like sacrilege going to drive on it, but that's what's going to happen eventually. So that's the outline of it all. I think it's all been packed in now. The edges have all been dressed, so we need to sow them with grass seed. Obviously the outlet onto the road still needs to be done. Okay, it's the next day, I'm just checking the cows while Lulu winds them up. Math sensor just arrived. So hopefully, quick change of the math sensor and we will have a working turbo system. I predict no material change. There's the old one. The new one, come on. I've already um, taken the packaging off. It was better wrapped than this. There's a wee sensor in there. Airflow's going that way, so that way. 
I've also lost the clip for that to retain that in, but we'll deal with that later. So now, gently loosen that off a wee bit. Oh. I would be so chuffed if this works. Go for a spin. Or buying a drum. That was only second gear and it sometimes works fine in second gear, but sometimes doesn't and it did that time. Oh, come on, please, please. All right, we're getting going first. Second, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. That's well, good, third. Yes! Woo! Ah, oh, you're a beauty! Made my day. All it was was a math sensor. We sensor, mass airflow sensor. Yes! Obviously the math sensor wasn't sending the right signal uh, to the ECU, which then sends it to the turbo. So the turbo was thinking there's plenty of air going into the engine and it wasn't spooling up. And now the sensor's telling it the right amount of air that's passing this sensor. So now the turbo's like, okay, it needs more air. Boom, more air. Results in speed. If you don't drive a Defender, what I mean by speed is like um, 0 to 60 in about 20 seconds rather than three minutes. Oh, that is a beauty. Perfect, because all I've ordered is a math sensor and a service kit. I'm going to use the service kit anyway. I've not ordered any other spares or repairs. So third, normal, normal, I mean the turbo should kick in about now, it didn't before, but this time Oh, it's like G-force, charging, 50 miles an hour already Here's the old one for the bin Attempt number two Next step is finish clearing it out. I've still got a few bits to do and put all the seats and everything all back in. There is holes and stuff to fix the back. I'm not tackling them yet. Service kit ordered, so I need to change the oils, all the filters. Gonna order a roll of sound deadening, take all the carpets up again, put sound deadening on all the metal. That'll just quiet it down a bit. I need to fix the back window because it rattles like hell. Need to fix uh, this window because all the fans and temperature thingy bobbers, whatever you call them, they're all disconnected slash don't work. So I want a bit of temperature control with putting that window down. Fix this vent because it doesn't move. I think it's because that is bent or seized in there. Wheels could do with a bit of a refurb. All four wheels need to change the tires on the front because they're kind of off-road tires. I've got two other road ones for the front and the back ones, they're fine. And then quite a lot of cosmetic stuff. That's all faded. I can paint that black. These can come off and get painted. Same with these light surrounds. And then obviously the chassis. Loads of cosmetic things I could do. They're not that important. Chassis is solid, fine at the moment. I'm not sure what to do, whether just to ignore it for a couple of years and commit to a full galvanized chassis for it. Or do a bit of work to it now and have it um, buzz welded slash wax oiled um, underneath. Probably worth just waiting and putting a full chassis on it. It's not bad, like from there forward, it's fine. Um, there backwards is meh. You can just get rear cross members for it. A full galv chassis would just mean it'd be done. I wouldn't need to ever think about the chassis ever again. Yeah, it's quite expensive. Wouldn't be doing it tomorrow anyway. I've just bought it, I'm moving house. Uh, yeah, the funds are not available right now. A couple of years time maybe, that's a project for then. But next step, full service. <laughs>